Hello, tiny friends, and welcome to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene, and for those of you that are new to my channel and those of you that are coming back, I want to thank you all so much and welcome, welcome to my channel. I hope you all have had a lovely holiday season and many blessings to you all to come through this new year. Now, today I'm going to be taking this Dollar Tree dollhouse table and I'm going to convert it into an early 20th century cocktail table. Now, tiny friends, I know it's been a while and I'm really sorry for that. I have been recovering from reconstructive foot surgery and I will spare you all the details of that. But I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that I can no longer pass through a metal detector without sounding off the alarm. But I am healing very well. It's just taken me a lot longer to complete this project and share it with you all. Now, I really didn't have a desire to convert one of these dollhouse pieces from the Dollar Tree. I have seen many talented videos where they do so, but when I purchased this table, I had originally intended to take it apart and use all the pieces for multiple miniatures. But one of my tiny friends suggested that the Josephine house needed a coffee table. And the height of this table actually gave me the idea to use this piece to do so because they're kind of short and it reminded me more so of a coffee table than a dining table. So that's what I'm going to be doing today, tiny friends. I hope you all enjoy this video. Now, for time's sake, I have prepared some of the pieces and parts that I'll be using um, to convert this table here. And I'm going to show you what I have so far, and then we'll go from there. Okay, now, I originally purchased two tables at the time. And I've taken the first table, I've taken it apart, and I've actually cut it apart. Now, the tabletop piece is super thin, so it was easy to do so. And I'm going to take this and frame it around the top part of the table. And then the inner piece will be used as uh, more of support underneath the tabletop since it's so thin. So something like this. And I have a piece of acetate here that I have cut from the plastic lid of one of those aluminum baking pans. You know how sometimes they do come with a plastic lid. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this right now, but in case I want to use it as a glass top to the table, I have it on hand. So um, we'll see what it looks like and yeah, go from there. Now, I did uh, prepare a support bar for underneath the table, and that will be going in between the legs. I used a couple wooden beads and some poster board paper or cardstock with tiny little strips and just wrapped them around for added detail. And here are my legs, tiny friends. <laughs> and it's okay to laugh at these because I did. I created these from a Q-tip and I snipped off the tips of the Q-tip and used the stick part. And yeah, they look like frog toes to me. <laughs> so I had a great laugh with these and you can too, but we're gonna come back and we can laugh more about these legs in a little bit here. Now I began with sketching out some of my ideas nothing specific to the design of the table, just to get some of these ideas out of my head and give me a start on uh, designing this table here. Now, I knew I wanted to have those skinny legs that kind of bowed out, and most of the time you see them created with two pieces, but I decided to add a third piece and then proceeded to add the feet to these, which actually turned out to look like frog toes or kitty toes. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and use them. I was going more for the clawfoot style from the clawfoot tub, and I probably should have began with a ball, but I didn't. <laughs> but I did save one to show you how I actually did this, and I prepared all the other pieces. So each leg are... Um, 
each leg is constructed from three single pieces to make one full leg base. So yeah, tiny friends, <laughs> it'll be pretty unique. That's all I can say. And uh, what I did was just drew a curve line here and use that as a guide to curve the Q-tip stick. I just want to take a moment here to talk a little bit about this and also the contents of the Josephine house. Now I did a lot of research and I decided to take um, different ideas from multiple styles of the cocktail table to create one unique design. And in the beginning they were called cocktail tables and they were used more so by the European elites, which really isn't surprising, right? but they were shorter and more stout in size and design, and then had a removable glass top that was used as a serving tray. And then they began to be built more narrow and slender on the tabletop, which I will not be doing with this one because tiny friends, shaping and sanding really isn't one of my favorite things to do. So I'm gonna work with this width as is and just get creative with it. Now, a lot of the photos from the 1930s, a lot of the interior photos, they didn't even have a cocktail table or a coffee table. Um, so that really wasn't, or uh, really didn't become more of a popular common household item until after the war. So sometime during the late 40s, I know it was post-war when they became more common in the household. Now to discuss the contents of the Josephine house. Over the break, I was thinking about the couple in the house and I realized that they are now in their golden years during the 30s. And uh, a lot of the photos of the interior furnishings of the 30s were older and more so from the previous century or the 1800s. And so I'm going to keep that in mind when I continue to create uh, furnishings for the house because, you know, things have been passed down through the generations and maybe the couple has had pieces for several years or, you know, all their lives. So I'm definitely going to be more aware of that as I'm creating more furnishing pieces for the house. Not everything you see is going to be modern from the, that era in time. Okay, going back to my frog toe feet legs, <laughs> I use three materials to construct these legs here. And I have my DOS air dry clay uh, Q tips, as you've seen, and my Gorilla Wood glue, which is a superb component when using air dry clay. And this is how I came about with these frog toe feet. <laughs> I've just taken a very small amount of the air dry clay and uh, rolled a tiny little piece into a snake like form and rounded one end and pointed the other end. And I'm really sorry that most of this will probably probably be out of frame and off the camera because it was really hard to try and keep it underneath the camera while I was working with it. Um, but I just curved it a little bit and it kind of looks like a little teardrop shape. And this is what it looks like. And I'm just going to need three of these tiny little pieces. So once I get all three pieces, I can go ahead and begin to glue them onto the stick. So starting with the middle piece, I just dipped it into the wood glue and laid it right on top of the stick and began to mold it right around that stick and shape it and secure it nice and tight there. And I'm actually gonna be using a previous piece just to compare in size because I do wanna keep it in a similar, a similar size for the one foot base itself. But once I got that uh, nice and secure, I just ran a little bit of wood glue along the whole side of that first toe 
and applied uh, the second toe. And I did the same thing, just molded it and shaped it right into place on the side of that stick there. And then I can go ahead with the third toe. I have to call them toes, tiny friends, because that's what they look like. <laughs> so once I get this third little frog toe on, I'm going to go ahead and shape all the whole piece itself and just begin to mold it into place and shape it until I'm happy enough with it. I'm also going to smooth down that connecting point where the clay connects with the stick so that you don't really see that defined line and you can't really tell that it's, you know, too individual pieces and it looks like one whole piece there. Okay, so I'm going to begin layering uh, the wood glue all around and completely covering the foot part of this leg. And that's for a few reasons, tiny friends. Uh, for one, it's going to really strengthen this clay so that I don't have to be afraid of it breaking on me later on down the road. It's going to fill in any indents or gaps or spaces that need to be filled in and also any cracks that may occur from the clay drying or sometimes when we're molding with air dry clay, we'll get some cracks. So that'll fill that in as well. And it's also going to allow this piece to be more pliable and I can shape it a little more. The glue is going to be sinking into the clay, allowing that to have a little bit more moisture and have a little bit more stickiness and, and firmness all in the same sense so that I can shape it a little more. And wood glue is very shapeable, tiny friends. I love using it to work on these tiny little pieces or if I'm creating handles or any type of piece that needs added molding and shaping or filling. And it's also very sandable as well. You can sand the wood glue when it dries. But now that I've gotten it on here, and this probably won't make any sense, but now I have to remove some of that glue because it's gonna start to melt into one form and I need to groove out these toes here so that you can see they're separated. That little paw reminds me of a kitty paw when they stretch their toes. <laughs> it's really cute. But anyways, while this is drying, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back in and define some of that detail about two times, and then it will stop melting into one form and take shape, and the detail will stay put. But in the meantime, I am going to glue these three pieces together and create the tabletop. Now I've sanded around all three pieces, got them nice and even, nice and smooth, and I've sanded off as much of that excess glue as I possibly could to smooth it down. And I'm just going to glue these pieces together with my wood glue. And then I'm gonna set something heavy on them and let them dry completely before coming back to them. Okay, back to my legs, tiny friends. Um, I didn't film gluing this last base together because honestly, I started thinking and second guessing it and thought I was gonna be creating new legs and not using these. But once I put them up to the table, they really didn't look that bad. So I decided just keep going and it'll be unique. It will. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to do. But to glue them together, um, I started with was the two pieces that actually pointed out were on the side there. And I laid them flat on the mat and held them down flat and then used my wood glue and just uh, applied it to the inside of the leg pieces and squeezed them together there and held them until they took hold while I was keeping them flat to my mat there because I, I wanted them to um, make sure they glued nice and even to each other. And after they were dry, I added the middle 
part. Now I had to wait for it to dry because if I were to add the middle part while they were still wet, the middle leg there would have fell through and separated the two pieces. But as you can see, it's slightly larger than the other piece and that's okay. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference and be as noticeable when they're actually on the table. I also cut down the top parts about a quarter of an inch and then sanded that, that down as well. And then I sanded down the padding, the bottoms of the feet there, because some of the Q-tip stick was sticking out a little more than I wanted it to. So I just sanded those down as well and smoothed them out uh, as best as I could so they wouldn't be as noticeable. Okay, I made a little plus sign here. I measured out where I wanted these legs to sit. And then I added a little bit of tacky glue to the top part of the table and I dipped the legs in wood glue. And I'm just giving them a nice little press right into that glue. And I'm also making sure that that middle foot is facing straight forward off to the side of the table. I don't want it to, you know, shift one way or the other. So I'm just being aware of that. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the second leg. And then I'm going to set this aside and let this dry completely. While it's drying, I thought it'd be a good time to work on some trimming that I uh, created with my Cricut program and I'm using poster board here. And this, these pieces here are just excess from uh, the trimming pieces that I've cut out. And I'm gonna take this tiny skinny strip and put it right in the middle of the wider strip, just like this. And then I'm going to add this right around the whole edge of the table for added detail. Okay, but before I do that, tiny friends, I'm going to need to add a couple support bars. So I'm going to add the one that I created and prepared, and I've just dipped the ends in some glue, and I've also added some glue right in the nooks where that bar is actually going to be sitting. And I'm just making sure that I'm pressing it nice and tight down in where it needs to sit and that it's actually sitting nice and straight and even uh, between those legs. And then I'm going to add um, additional glue right on top of that bar, right in the nooks where they're sitting, just to give me some more security and make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. And I also decided to add an additional support bar that's going to be glued to the table itself in between the legs as you see here and this is helping it to be nice and strong so it's not wobbly uh, while this was drying i added a heavy full bottle of mod podge to sit right on top of that tabletop to keep it drying nice and flat and straight and even and i also taped down the feet part to my mat with some painter's tape and that helped it dry nice and flat to the surface so that the feet weren't lifted or one or two of the feet weren't lifted off of the floor. So that helped really well. So now that it's nice and dry and completed, we can add this little bit of detailing and trimming around the table. Now I've cut these pieces out with my Cricut machine and I've doubled the layer on these end trimmings here. I just glued them down like that with some tacky glue. And I also decided to take some of that wider strip and fill in the middle pieces there just to give it some more uh, thickness because the trimming that's gonna go around that table is just a single layer and the ends are doubled. Now, even though the ends are gonna go to a triple layer, you're not really gonna notice a difference. So I'm just going to glue this down. It's going to go all the way around and I'm going to come back after I get that on there. Okay, so I've taken the trimming pieces and I just flared them out a little bit so that they're not sticking straight up and it's ready to paint. So I am going to use this shade of cinnamon by Folk Art. It's like a Canelli or Canille kind of shade of cinnamon 
and my Waverly Antique Wax. Now I'm going to give it a base coat of the cinnamon and then go back in with the wax. So this is what it's looking like with the base of that shade of cinnamon. And now I'm going to apply the antique wax and I'm going to cover most of the table. I'm not going to cover the middle section of the top part here and you'll see. Now I'm going to begin with a little bit at a time. Uh, using this stuff is just like using um, wood stain only it's not as sticky and it's easier to clean up and it dries pretty quickly too. It's more waxy. So um, a little bit goes a long way and it will react just like uh, wood stain. So it's not gonna cover up any glue sections or residues left behind by glue, um, but you can layer it again and it'll cover it up nicely. But you can use a Q-tip or a soft cloth to apply it. You can rub it on. You can also use the same to remove excess. I would definitely um, not recommend using paper towels unless you have a softer brand that's more like a cloth. But you definitely want to remove the excess because it will cake up and dry and not look so pretty. Now, uh, you can apply the antique wax to foam cord board, to mat board, to the plastic Christen Bond kits, and it settles nicely in that plastic fake wood right into the grooves, and it just makes it look really realistic. I've used this on the kitchen table in the Josephine house and some of the bathroom pieces from the Christen Chris Bond kits, and I am also going to be doing a Christen Bond sewing machine and I'll show you how I use this on that to make it look more realistic. Now, um, uh, before I dedicated my time fully to miniatures, I was a crafter and I do still craft on an occasion, uh, but this is a very popular product amongst the crafters and the DIY crafters and that's where I learned how to use this and all about it. And I've just crossed it over into my miniatures. Now this giant bottle that I have has lasted me almost two years, tiny friends, and I use it on the regular. I use it all the time. So it lasts a long time and it goes a long way. So I would recommend trying it if you haven't. So this is what it's looking like so far. And that cinnamon shade is a beautiful undertone for the antique wax here. And I've also, uh, applied a layer of matte Mod Podge on the trimming pieces here just to stiffen them up a bit and protect them a little more. And now I can go in and do my one of my favorite parts and that's using my chalk pastels to add some shading and darker tones and depth. And I'm just gonna mix up some black and brown and go all around in the grooves or where I think some darker tones need to be on this cocktail table here. I'm super excited about the way this is looking, tiny friends. I did not expect this, <laughs> especially with those frog toe legs. <laughs> but um, I really hope you're enjoying this video today, tiny friends. I am excited that I finally got to put this out and that it's completed and um, hopefully it won't take me as long to um, get to my next project which is going to be going back into the back room and uh, installing a new floor and completing that renovation so that I can begin to create some furnishings so that the granny can have a sewing room and I'm excited about creating some of those pieces that are going to be going in there because I have a few ideas for that back room back there uh, but if you are enjoying this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to hit that like button and I'm going to continue on with this and uh, show you what it's looking like here. 
So after I added that chalk pastel, I gave it a good coating with hairspray. Um, hairspray is a great sealant and protectant. So um, it has been sealed and completely dried, and this is what it's looking like. I'm really like surprised how this turned out. And just to think I didn't even want to do a Dollar Tree dollhouse conversion, but I'm really glad that I did. So I have decided to use the glass top, but I've trimmed it down and I'm only going to place it on the inner side, not over the whole thing. So just on the inside of the frame. And I'm just using some tacky glue and I'm only going to put a little bit, um, not all the way around the frame, but just in a few areas here. Because even though it's going to dry clear, I don't want it to leave noticeable residue underneath that acetate. So I am just applying some right in the crease of that frame. And this is what it looks like. It is completed and now I can dress it with a few miniatures which was a little bit of a struggle because I had to really imagine what the granny would put on her cocktail table since I couldn't find any images or inspiration. Now I created this little serving tray. So if you all want to see how I created that, just let me know. So in the comments below, I will definitely be creating some more. And if you want to know how I did this, I will do a video and show you how. I love it. It came out really nicely. And um, I'm just going to use my imagination. <laughs> now, I really wanted to go with a different face on those flowers, those dried flowers, but they are like hot glued in there, so I couldn't pull them out. But that's okay. It worked out in the end. And we have this little fly swatter. So if you also want to know how I created that, I can do a video on that. It wasn't very hard at all. It was pretty simple, actually. I actually created another one for the kitchen. <laughs> so let's look at this in the living room. And let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you are subscribing, do not forget to hit that top bell notification button to be notified every time I upload a new project. I know the granny just loves this cocktail table. I am so glad that I just decided to go for it. It makes a lovely addition in the 1930s living room. Now, I'm going to be jumping all over the house. Um, I just usually go wherever my mind tells me to go and create whatever my mind thinks I need to create. Um, so I'll be back upstairs in my next video to complete that renovation. And I just feel like it's more exciting that way. I don't like to stay put in one area until it's fully completed. Um, I just basically go wherever I feel the need to go and create that way. Um, I want to thank you all for joining me on my journey. I am so thankful my channel is growing like super fast and I'm really surprised about that. So thank you all so much for subscribing and until the next time, have a lovely day. Bye-bye.